A joke, uncomfortable and a sad day for democracy. Not my words, your words, describing the contentious first presidential debate. Good morning to you, I'm Eric Connor. And I'm Stella Escobedo. Yeah, this morning the debate is making front pages all over the nation. So let's start with this. The San Diego Union Tribune. The headline reads, Trump-Biden clash in bitter showdown. Let's head to our nation's capital. The front page of the Washington Post reads, quote, Debate plunges to fiery squabbling. And finally, the New York Post. The headline says, first debate, a brutal slugfest and a hot mess. Nasty. News 8's Evan Arani is trying to cut through all of the noise from last night. And he's live with a recap of everything from the handling of the coronavirus to the president's tax returns. And Evan, I know you're, you're giving our viewers some of the substance, albeit very little, from the debate here. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. I mean, as you mentioned, all of those headlines, pretty accurate descriptions from both sides of the aisle. That was Trump supporters, Biden supporters, uh, not many Chris Wallace supporters from last night saying that he did a pretty poor job moderating that debate, uh, but a lot of name calling on both sides. And uh, it was a tough one to watch for sure. I mean, combing through all of the sound bites, the hardest part was finding sound bites where both candidates actually spoke of substance, where it wasn't name calling or back and forth or just talking over each other for most of the time. So that was the toughest part. But we do want to stick to a, tuple, a couple topics that we were able to find a little bit of a, a good way to kind of give you an idea of how yesterday turned out if you weren't able to tune in. So uh, one of the first topics that they covered was, of course, the pandemic and the handling of the pandemic on Trump's end. They discussed the idea that Trump has been having rallies, several, several rallies uh, over the last couple of months that have been uh, some indoors, some outdoors, and kind of disregarding the pandemic as a whole with thousands of people packed into those rallies. Here was that conversation. We have had no problem whatsoever. It's outside. That's a big difference, according to the experts. And we do them outside. We have tremendous crowds, as you see. I mean, every and, and literally on 24 hours notice. He's been totally irresponsible the way in which he has handled the, the social distancing and people wearing masks, basically encourage them not to. All right. Ben, he's a fool on this. If you could get the crowds, you would have done the same thing. But you can't. Nobody cares. Gentlemen, can we move on Nobody to the economy? Gentlemen, can we move on to the economy? Yes. You could even hear there toward the end, Chris Wallace trying to kind of corral Biden and Trump to stay on topic, to focus on the question at hand, which they often did not. Now, they moved on to the topic of taxes. Recent reports from The New York Times do say that Trump only paid $750 in federal income taxes, a topic that many were expecting to come up for this debate. When addressing it, Trump called it fake news. However, uh, Biden pushed back against him. Here's that interaction. He says he's smart because he can take advantage of the tax code. And he does take advantage of the tax code. That's why I'm going to eliminate the Trump tax cuts. And we're going to, we're, I'm going to eliminate those tax okay. cuts. And make sure that we invest in the people who, in fact, need the help. People out there need help. But why didn't you do it over 20, in the last 25 years? Because you weren't president. you Because you weren't president screwing things up. You were a senator. And You're the, the way, worst you were president vice, America has ever had. Hey, hey, Come Joe, on. Let me, let me just tell you, Joe. I've done more in, in 47 months. I've done more than you've done in 47 years, Joe. We've done things. So according to CBS's Battleground Tracker poll, more than 8 in 10 voters who watched described the debate's tone as negative, including majorities of each candidate's supporters. 48% said that Biden won, while 41% think Trump was the winner. Biden's margin here not too different than his lead in national polls. 10% of the people participating in that poll called the debate a tie. So uh, not much to kind of squeeze out of those two hours, it was very tough to be able to find uh, any sound that was able to give substance on both sides and actually talk about policy. And to be honest, that seemed like why uh, so many people described it as annoying. They, th that was the overwhelming uh, sentiment as of yesterday's debate. And it seems like it's because they weren't actually able to stick to any topics that address what the nation's going through right now. Two very important topics are, of course, uh, the coronavirus and, uh, you know, the election, the 
upcoming election in terms of uh, people feeling confident and feeling like the election is safe. And it didn't seem like either candidate was able to accurately address the concerns that the American public has. So in the next half hour, we're going to be covering health care and voting fraud. That was something that came up in yesterday's debate. We'll have a little bit of sound from both of them. But again, the overwhelming sentiment was that yesterday's debate was not a good indicator of what each of these candidates has to offer. It was a lot of name calling. It was a lot of talking over each other and just plenty of chaos. I'll send things back to both of you. Evan, thank you. In the meantime, Republican lawmakers met with Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett on Capitol Hill. Confirmation hearings in the Senate are set to begin October 12th in what's sure to be a fight down party lines. The likelihood of litigation after the election is also prompting concerns over a potential lack of impartiality. Barrett's critics say her appointment could lead to the elimination of the Affordable Care Act and a reversal of the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision on abortion. 606, time for your morning rush. We're waiting to learn the condition of a fighter jet pilot after he collided with a KC-130 based out of MCAS Miramar. So this happened around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon near Salton City in Imperial County. Marines say an F-35 fighter jet was in a refueling maneuver with the KC-130 when it made contact with the other plane and lost control. Fortunately, it was able to make a safe emergency landing and the pilot of the fighter jet was able to successfully eject. Eight people were reportedly on the KC-130. None of them were hurt. This morning, a San Diego police officer stripped of his powers and suspended without pay over allegations he made a social media post mocking a man he shot to death three months ago. Officer Jonathan Lucas has been investigated over the Instagram post right here. It's about a memorial to 25-year-old Leonardo Ibarra. It allegedly shows him next to a memorial for Ibarra with the hashtag Eastside, followed by several laughing and crying emojis. Police Chief David Nislight condemned the post and immediately launched an internal investigation. Depending on what the investigation uncovers, Chief Nislight said the officer could eventually be fired. San Diego County will stay in the red tier for another week, according to the state's new adjusted case rate. The rate came down to 6.7 yesterday, thanks in part to increased testing efforts. The positivity rate now at 3.8 percent. In the meantime, county officials reported 251 new cases out of just under 9,000 tests, a positive rate of 3 percent. Just three of those new cases are from SDSU. Five new deaths were reported countywide, bringing that total to 781 people. And frustrated with the state's guidance, today elected officials and local business Business leaders will meet in front of the county administration center to call for businesses to reopen safely. It's part of the We Mean Business San Diego Coalition. They will ask the county board of supervisors to take back control of our local reopening plans. They say the current plan is too strict. It's gone and the Padres tie at one to one. Ah, oh, the kids are having some fun tonight. A grand slam. This is unbelievable. Oh, as the plot thickens. Manny Machado is tonight's Padres hero. For the first time in 14 years, the San Diego Padres have clinched their spot in the postseason. Did that put a smile on your face? <laughs> uh, playoff baseball is back here in San Diego. Yeah, News Age Chris Grow live at Petco Park, where the Padres will play their first postseason game in 14 years. I know there's no fans allowed there, Chris, but we can still feel the excitement yeah. building here in San Diego. You really can, and there hasn't been fans at any of the 60 games the Padres Season, and that includes obviously the home games as well. But for the small times that the fans have been able to celebrate with the players, especially after clinching the playoffs, you could feel that emotion, that energy, that vibrant power here because it's been so long since the Padres had have uh, made the playoffs, really 14 years we're talking about. So when they did have a chance to celebrate, you could feel the atmosphere just rising. And so what a season it has been for our San Diego Padres. They actually finished second in the NL West to that team up there up north. Uh, I think they call them the Dodgers. Carlo Chiquetto might get mad at me for that. But they also had the second best record in the NL. In fact, they finished better than the other two division winners. They just so happened to be in the same division as the Dodgers. So they don't get that crown of division winner. Either way, though, in this year of an expanded playoffs, they're going to be taking on the St. Louis Cardinals in a best of three series. Now, normally you have four teams that make the playoffs. Uh, there is a fifth team. There's that play in game to decide who plays the number one seed. 
but things are so different. There are eight teams in the AL, eight teams in the NL, all battling for a chance at that World Series title. We have a very young team here in San Diego. In fact, starting pitcher for game one, Chris Paddock, he was 10 years old the last time the Padres made the playoffs. Fernando Tatis Jr., he was seven. So they don't know what it's like to lose to the, to the Cardinals. This isn't, you know, the same as having a team here that's been experiencing this playoff drama and losses year after year. This is a fresh, young, vibrant, exciting team, and they feel the energy even though the fans aren't in Petco Park. You know, although we're not able to see them on the on the park, but uh, I think we, uh, we still can feel them, man. You know, the vibe, the vibe, you know, the all the support they give us to the social media, and uh, you know, we can still feel them, although they're still not in the crowd. And look, Eric, you mentioned uh, over at 5:30 that we're not covering the debate today, but we're still doing some hard-hitting journalism. In fact, we've done our research and found out what happened last in the year 2006. Well, that team, the Padres, lost to. They ended up being the World Series champions. The number one song on the Billboard Top 100, "Bad Day." Um, I'm pretty sure I always had a bad day every time I heard that song. I don't know how that made uh, the number one. President George W. Bush was still in office, and I was just 14 years old. We've been mentioning everybody else's ages. Why don't we mention mine? And I was just starting out as a freshman in high school. So, uh, <laughs> oh, oh man, Eric Stella. What a trip down memory lane. You still I got that it. boyish face there, Chris Grow. I love it. 14 years. Wow, really? Yeah. A little bit of fuzz, a little bit of fuzz, a little bit of fuzz. Yeah. This is why you're such a good journalist. Hard hitting that stuff there, it. Chris. Thank you. Wow, I remember that song. I had a bad no day. Problem, remember that song? Yeah. That was a big hit, too. I, know. Wow. I hear Netta singing right now, too. Netta, why don't you go ahead and take I'm it away? I'm not going to sing for you. I don't want to ruin anyone's day. No, I didn't know what song that was until you started singing it, Eric. So now I remember <laughs> a trip down memory lane. Uh, look at this gorgeous live shot of Petco Park right now. Don't you wish you could fill the stands? I'm sure a lot of folks are just wishing if only we could be there during playoffs. But hey, we can still celebrate. That's for sure. And it's going to be a hot one today. I wish for the team's sake that the game was uh, evening game, but nope, it's right smack in the middle of the day. So that sun will be ablazing. And today is the hottest day of our heat wave. But you know what? They can handle the heat. If any team can, it's this young Padres team this year uh, that will be able to handle it. Let's show you that forecast uh, for the game. 91 degrees by uh, noontime today. We'll stay in the low 90s. 2 o'clock that's when that first pitch will be and it'll be 92 degrees for that. Now tomorrow uh, the game will be 88 degrees at 208. So if they uh, they will play today and again tomorrow and the temperatures will be very very hot but today will be the hottest one. Heat advisory in effect from the coast all the way to the foothills and yes for the coastal conditions uh, temperatures will be in the 80s at our beaches and then if you go just a little bit east places like Mira Mesa Kearney Mesa you'll be in the 90s to triple digits today and then inland locations you'll be even hotter than that so potential record breakers out there and uh, we'll be watching very closely Jenny so it looks good out there traffic wise. Good morning to you. if you're just waking up Wednesday morning at about 614. You can see your travel times really are fine in the central part of the county. I'll show you the north and south in just a second. The one crash that I have per CHP is off of your freeways kind of far to the east here south of Hamul. Otai Lakes Road right at West Day Road. It looks like a car actually rolled over here. So crews are on the scene. They are blocking a single lane in that intersection. As I promised you, here's the North County where there is absolutely nothing impacting your drive at all down to the south. At one point, the entire span of the Coronado Bridge was seeing a little bit of volume. It's since kind of uh, recovered just at the very tail end. You'll tap those brakes, but it's really nothing major. Stella. Jenny, thank you, Stella. Come. New details expected in the shooting of Breonna Taylor as the grand jury proceedings are made public. The state's wildfire season getting worse. Northern California dealing with a burn the size of nearly 3 million football fields. Yeah, and county health experts weigh in on what Halloween will look like here in San Diego. That's next.